And we're back with another G.I. Joe Classified Series review. It's Moody Man here for Jason Faria, better known as Shockwave. And he was Shock Blast, and we'll get into that in a bit. But he's number 105 in the line. He's a character that debuted in Real American Hero back in 88. And yeah, that was around the time, I'm old, when I started collecting Joes and Shockwave, like many of us around the same age, a lot of... Critics' reviews in the community remember this man very well. He stood out, of course. He's got that urban camo SWAT look. You know, definitely one of the most memorable late 80s Joes. But the question I have for you guys today is our guy, Mr. Faria. Is he SWAT or is he SRT? Is he Special Weapons and Tactics or is he Special Reaction Team? You know? A lot of different file cards for this man, for Faria, whether he's from the Detroit Police Academy or he's from the Army. We'll see. Either way, Jason Faria specializes in that close encounter combat, breaching, clearing buildings, and so forth. Every tactical advantage you'd want to know as a member of either SWAT or SRT. And he was born in Dearborn, Michigan, and there is a U of M University of Michigan campus close by my squad. And also, like Michigan, Faria also received several citations. Mm. Thankfully, for Shockwave, they were for bravery. Oh, allegations. Anyway, go blue, baby. Go blue. And we're talking big blue right here with Shockwave. Let's take a look at the packaging for number 105, of course, we have this blessed, truly blessed artwork. I'm such a big fan. You know what I was actually thinking what would be super rad is if we got bios and just across like a whole spreadsheet of this particular art um, going forward and just it would be a kick ass poster or shirt or whatever. So definitely an opportunity there. Uh, strangely, you know, we did talk about this with Helix. There is a SWAT van in the back of her packaging, but on this one for Shockwave, we're over here in like uh, Broca Beach, or it actually looks like almost like a mountain uh, river there, a stream, so obviously he was part of that Joe squad that was uh, observation squad that was sent out to spy on Destro's Scotland Castle along with Flint, Sneak Peek, and Outback, so this could be a callback to that, otherwise... Yeah, it's not as entertaining. Uh, we do see um, that that plane from Deke. I mean, not the plane, the train that we had uh, from the Metalhead packaging that we took a look at in a, a recent issue of Toy Kind of Moods. So, yeah, that that's kind of the deal there. Of course, you got your weapons, your art. We're going back to plastic-free packaging, so that's exciting. And QR code does nothing. We know that. Taking a look at the figure, Mr. Jason here. Let's take a look at his paint apps on his face sculpt. Looking good. Not too bad. Very similar to a figure we recently received right here with Firefly. So let's do a little side-by-side -side action if we can. There we go. So as you can see, there's some reuse there in the paint, but a little different. Firefly's eyes are definitely more expressive. Jason's kind of got one squint in there and one open, so that's interesting. And of course, everybody immediately was like, oh, I'll repaint a beachhead, and we'll get to that in one sec. But kind of digging into these face sculpts here, the balaclava look. Yeah, of course, different balaclava than we had with beachhead. I would be remiss not to show the legs because that is the use that we got here so these boots are not made for walking they're actually made for swimming uh they're actually not really made for swimming i love the gridiron loadout and i was afraid that the the boots actually were going to snap snap out but you won't have that problem with shockwave because there's no way you're putting this web gear on a SWAT officer. So, uh, <laughs> shout out to Gridiron. But yeah, as you can see, we got pins, double knees. Um, I mean, I could mess around with it. I mean, you guys know the articulation with G.I. Joe by now. But yeah, I'm, I'm just not a fan of how we had the pin here. And that was a problem I had with Helix was I had one pin dented in there. 
and one pulled out and then yeah it just gets real silly as you can see this is a kind of the pin issues and the yeah these legs are are horrible i get i get the reuse um you're going to use that money elsewhere probably in the paint apps here and of course uh tony did a wonderful job with the digi camo big fan of that um but yeah i mean the boots itself are cool we have those shin braces that armor there that you would want on a SWAT officer srt what have you so that works out um looking like a different holster there so that yep yeah, there you go so that the holster is different at least on the right shin yep both both holsters are different but the legs are a thousand percent the same there they're just kind of covered by the holsters and uh but these are what i love what they're doing with the holsters on the secondary holster here is they're 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 just so tight on you're just never gonna have to and of course you have a, a, a leg swivel there and then the drop down drop down legs and all that stuff so you know we got we got drop down hips i should say so we got all that going on and you know he he was fairly loose compared to hawk but not loose like um like firefly loose like jingling baby go ahead baby but you could see right here look no jiggle where Firefly has the jiggle. So in case you're wondering, they are a little more sturdy. Um, at this point, I'd say they're a little, uh, yeah, but let's let's get even closer there. The comparison on the thigh, yeah, we can see. Yep, there you go. You see the, the pattern is there. It's just a really wonderful paint job on there. And then it looks like... Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't share the same belt. I was I was almost wondering about that buckle, but uh, nice job there. Of course, he's going to carry lots of ammo, lots of bullet casings, and and stuff like that. So yeah, overall, there you go. It's a little bit of butt action. Hey, if we're going to do it for the girls, we're going to do it for the guys, right? But yeah, they get the his cargo pant. But from the top, completely different because he shares his torso with Stalker and the arms. There you go. Look at that, huh? Ooh, what a paint job. You'd never know, right? Here I am to expose this, expose it all, even right down to the cuff. Right there. And then look at that. The gloves. The gloves, too. You wouldn't know it because he doesn't have that arm brace, which is nice because we didn't get, we can get the arm brace with Beachhead despite getting it, the leg braces, so... I don't know if you guys know where that. I think this is all new, right? But if it isn't, let me know in the comments, right? But yeah, look at that. Legs, arms, hands. Same, same. There you go. And torso is a little different, harder to imagine. But then, so he must have that ab crunch. But yeah, there it is. It's there. But because of the vest, oh, you can get a little bit. Yeah, there it is too. It's there, but the, the vest prevents it. But that's fine. I mean, you're not going to go too wild. This guy's going to be carrying a shield and a baton and all that stuff and and uh, whatnot. But uh, yeah, I just want to show you, of course, because the um, he's got a much different secondary. So, of course, that vest. Yeah, overall, there you go. That's the usage. We'll give you a, a look, a wide look, and a couple gripes here is this leg holster that he also does share with Beachhead. It looks like this one uses an additional strap, to, and then these two together don't look so bad, and it looks much better than here. And I've had to adjust it several times. We could see. Yeah, that makes man these yeah, these boots are bad. Be careful with them, guys, as they're old. Reuse. I get reuse totally, especially if you're gonna use it to pay for new molds and stuff. Totally cool with that. But uh yeah, this sheath. So we could see, yeah, there you go. So maybe someone knows of another leg sheath. I haven't looked at all the leg sheaths of my Joes. So it looks different, right? Try and get a good look there. 
Super props on this updated digital camo, the three berries they may call it, but I love it. It's a definitely makes them pop. It's awesome. And now we know that we're getting a V2 Storm Shadow on the way because he's probably just going to share what we see here. Uh, I'm sure there'll be it'll be a little bit different digital, but that's my favorite Storm Shadow of all time. So real excited about that. Let's get into the webs. Thing we want to talk about is the removable PC. You know, it says uh, patrol cover, patrol hat. So it's not some kind of baseball hat or anything like that. So, of course, we've seen a similar cap of much different. <laughs> so similar, but much different. Yeah, buddy. But yeah, far, just a far different hat for any of those who wanted to see comparisons between Gung Ho and Shockwave. Here we have his Ballistic Riot Shield. Um, did not come with the original, of course, Shockwave, but I uh, do love this. As Lenny pointed out, Comic-Con, these were the kind of, he didn't say this, but, you know, the marks of death. <laughs> but he did say that uh, Shockwave took out a couple Cobras. So, you know, that that that's cool. And it's quite obvious by the symbolism that we have there. So just real cool. And as you can see, this has some awesome effects to it. And lots of uh, dents and dinks and battle-worn damage and just a, a terrific job with the paintwork and then the, these I believe they mentioned they were going to glow but uh, I don't see anything there I mean I can go lights out there yeah they don't really glow not glowing there so yeah I don't know but I mean they maybe the, mm, good good detail to them but otherwise so here's an issue remember we had the alley viper shield that had the whole cool spinning thing so basically, Jason's only going to be able to hold this with his right arm. So it is pretty clunky trying to get his arm in there. But um, thankfully, you know, there's there's no issues with um, any breakage or anything like that. But once again, he's only going to be able to carry it on his one arm. There's no swivel. But thankfully, the arm has all sorts of articulation. Um, of course, that's a cost-cutting thing. Totally, totally get it there. The cover... Maybe a, a, a little too big, but usually I'm the least last person to really complain about that. I think this looks really good. Um, it does seem a little over if you want to go too wild, but, you know, just kind of standing there. It looks fine, especially if you angle his face and maybe kind of do the whole, like, covering his eyes kind of thing. He looks pretty cool. And uh, in case you wanted to have him surf with Outback and be really ridiculous or hang out with Chuckles in the break room or something. But, uh, yo, 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 but yo, yo, what up? Get, get that new era sticker on there. But, uh, yeah, just having fun there. But the riot shield overall, this is a badass accessory. A lot of the money went here, as you can see. And, and we're, we're getting an awesome ballistic shield because of reuse guys. That's just how it works. Um, not a whole lot of detail in there. Unlike the, the ones we got with the Alley Vipers, but that's totally fine. They think they did a great A job with this, minus the fact that we can't uh, position, we can't use it with either hand. He's going to be a lefty, but, you know, nothing wrong with that. One other thing I should point out, though, is the fact that there's no peg. Of course, this isn't removed, so if you wanted to place it on his back, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe there could have been a peg between here or something, but... Maybe, you know, like maybe a hole and then an additional peg you put in and then he could, I don't know how that would even look. Oh, that looks all right. I'm trying to f see how this would work with a shield on his back. Maybe it would just look stupid. Maybe it would just carry a lot of weight. But I like having all my accessories on the figure. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen with the shield. And here we have his dual micro Uzi. You know, it's kind of meshed with a Mac 11 Walter MP L. You know, it's got the whole, I don't know, you could call it a stair TMP. Either way, these auto, automatic little micro mini Uzi things. Um, several issues here. Doesn't come with his silencer, his suppressor, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. So that's a major major no-no there uh hardly any detail um again don't kind of like the hawk weapons i don't mind this is really flimsy this stick mag i would have much preferred snake eyes version of that 
Uzi there. And then of course we have, I believe, I believe this is Gridiron. Uzi. With a gigantic freaking silencer. But uh, that's, you know, it's a better option. There are options out there. That's a good thing. Because, yeah, this is very micro. So now we get the nightstick, billy club, ton. Um, yeah, a little warped. Not going to lie about that there. But, uh, yeah, not, not, not the greatest not the greatest accessory. At least now he'll be able to serve some hard time or give some hard time alongside the big boss man. So, <laughs> serve a hard time, punk! Yeah, and now the fun stuff. We got this dual purpose, like a gut hook knife or tack tool blade, a zack shove, whatever the hell you want to call it. Either way, this is going to pry open door hinges and so forth and you know I don't know it's not too sharp but you could definitely um hit someone over the head with it I don't think someone who swats going to use this in combat anyway melee you know the baton is is that um necessary evil but otherwise he's going to be firing and pulling some triggers for sure okay and now we have our hunting bayonet bowie combat knife um Maybe a Smith & Wesson kitchen knife? Guys, I have the same knives as him. No, I'm kidding. Actually, this one looks a little different. We're having fun with this, guys, because this is a shockwave review day. Let's have fun. But uh, there you go. It's just a little SWAT knife. Like I said, it's a little Bowie combat knife. Maybe stainless steel Smith & Wesson. You know, whatever. Standard issue, right? And of course, our dude Faria, he's got the knife sheaths. We got that one there, and it sticks like that. And yeah, no issues there. Nice shell casing there, nice detail. And then for that gut hook, it plops right in there. And again, see, these things are just going to forever slide down this knife holster thing. You really just got to pull it up and I'm also afraid that's going to rip off so but uh once you get it pulled up it's not a big deal but and there we go we can't do comparisons without comparing shockwave to shockwave I'm talking about the Decepticon the transformer that they also shared the name shock blast in the early 2000s due to those copyright those uh crazy copyright trademark issues and what for after seeing shockwave who doesn't want these Ryza Cobra shock troopers, some riot officers from the Cobra team to face Shockwave. That'd be a lot of fun. And then, yeah, just like the Hawk review, I got a comparison here to a nice custom done by the same person, K Wish. Special shout out to K Wish, who did a wonderful job here. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we jumped the gun on the riot shield thing. I believe that's a gridiron uh, loadout right there in the vest was from Etsy so pretty cool there it doesn't stay on too well as you could see but yeah whatever he's in battle but overall what a what a tremendous job I really don't like the way he holds these little Uzis I mean it's bad enough we don't get that suppressor that's maybe it's saved for the retro card because we won't get the shield and maybe they'll do some different stuff um, but overall, it just it doesn't really fit too well. It seems like the fingers are kind of slipping off. Um, but yeah, like I said, thank God for third parties. We've got other options. Uh, speaking of third party, I I think he's going to be chilling with my my version of Night Raid. Shout out to Carson Metaxas over there, 3D Joe's. I know he's got a Russian Night uh, Raid in the uh, works for Operation recall but this is my version uh michael b jordan of course to play him but yeah it's good uh i just think these two together man forget about it right we'll get uh, a better better gizat for jason but uh the, these two are gonna be teaming up in my collection so real excited about that it seems like and fingers crossed everybody that hasbro might have some of this distribution stuff down. I mean, none of these figures came from Taiwan or the UK or Canada or anything like that. So, you know, between BBTS and Entertainment Earth, who haven't been winning any of these races in quite some time, we've got all three 
And of course, we have the buzzer here to just, just destroy everybody, right? Because he's the buzzer and he doesn't need those damn glasses after all. Yeah, so look, just to wrap up, Jason Farrier, Shockwave. Yeah, number 105, he's a good figure. He's very good. Love the digi camo. Um, the shield is a total win. It's a, it's a home run there. You know, the reuse makes sense. It's just too bad we got just the same pinless legs and some of these issues with the boots. Aesthetically, it's great. Aesthetically, he is a tremendous figure, but um, eh, the functionality isn't the best. The weapons could have been much better. Um, but, eh, you know, he's very good. I'm going to go three and a half Detroit City Distillery Rye Whiskeys, baby. And don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the toy aisle.